Greg's just makes me hungry. Nope, that's not going to work, Ryan. Does that work? Let's sit over here, actually. Hello, everybody. It's been a while. It's been a while. Ari, Stephen, that's a northeast Ari. I want to give an update. I'm going to try not to get too angry and try not to rant too much about what has gone on with Bailey McLaren. Bailey, not just Bailey, his entire family. Bailey was the young, the young child who had an altercation with a Syrian. Well, I call him Syrian refugee. He's been here since he was a baby. So it had an altercation with another school child. <coughs> and it was used and it was blown up into a huge event where they lied and said that Bailey waterboarded a Syrian. They said it was racial. It was religiously motivated or racially motivated. It wasn't. Um, anyway, those of you, we, we run a little campaign to try and tell the truth. Because of that campaign, my donations were stopped. Uh, my, the, my ability to receive donations was stopped I believe I'm being sued <laughs> um, but I want to give you an update on what's happened with Bailey and his family and it's not a it's not a good update really if you're watching this give it a share again just to refresh if you're following the situation of what happened there was an altercation in a school playground two children one grabbed the other one. One threatened one in the classroom. The other one grabbed him and put him on the floor. And that's it. Because of that, that the, the young non-Syrian refugee, non-Muslim child, the English kid, Bailey, was expelled from school. Strange, I know, because other kids are beating people up all the time in that school, apparently, but he's been expelled. Now, it's not just he was expelled. What happened then was his name was given and his address was leaked. His address, address was leaked, and I've got all the evidence of it, and, the, and they've admitted it by Just Eat. And his family homes were targeted. They received thousands of threats to murder, rape and kill their family. When I met them, when I went to interview them about this situation, I met a mother with two 11-year-old twins, two other young sons, with nowhere to live. Because when the police come to relocate them, because of all these threats, the police come to move them from their home, they were taking them to a and b in Beeston, in a complete Muslim ghetto, two doors up from a prostitute centre, in a drug littered place, owned by Muslims, where when you go on the BNP's website to see what sort of BNP it is, all the accusations are of drugs, prostitution and racism. That's where the police were putting the family. On the way there, the mother said, stop the meat wagon, once she looked at where they were taking her. She was terrified, the family were terrified. When I met them, she had spent all of her Christmas money on housing them in the hotel, hiding in a city near Huddersfield. We then run a campaign. The campaign was to show this family some support. Now, this is nearly two months ago this happened. We relocated Bailey, not the authorities. You relocated Bailey. We relocated Bailey and his family to live temporarily whilst they worked with Kirkley's council because their, their council house that they were living in was, they couldn't live in. You ought to see what's been posted through that door since. The threats, the shit, Everything that gets posted through that door constantly when, whenever someone goes to check the house. Yeah? So to live for safety, they didn't willingly leave their home. They fled their home. They were made refugees. Now, if a refugee comes to this country and they turn up with their children, they're given a nice home, money, phones and safety. Let me tell you, and this is going to, um, I can't, understand it well i can because they don't give a shit about us or about anyone other than minorities or or, or refugees or bailey mclaren's two little sisters who are 11 years old are still not in a school have had no education since that day none at all two 11 year old girls what are social services doing what is your job what is your job? And, and this video is more of a point to, to not call anything at the minute 
but to give you one more week, to give Kirkley's council one more week, to give the social services one more week to do your fucking job. Two young 11 year old children are not in education for two months. And, and this is Bailey, and this is the, at Christmas, Bailey, a child, locked himself in a room, it's gonna piss me off even fucking talking about it, locked himself in a room and took an overdose. He spent days in hospital. So Piers fucking Morgan and all you other, all you other celebrities who jumped on the bandwagon against a young child whose entire life has been destroyed because of this. I hope you're happy with yourselves. So when social services get involved or should be involved, they say they're now involved. You've, you, the family have been contacting you. I've took, I took Bailey to see mental health teams because you're so fucking shit, your whole system. You've done nothing for this family, nothing at all. Nothing to help them. They've got no home. They've got no schools. If they were refugees, they'd have everything. Now they need help. And do you know what the Huddersfield Council even said even today? That the house they'll relocate them in, which is like 2.4 miles or something from their old house, which is in the same city. Do you know the young sisters? Do you know that they are traumatised because they've read all the threats about them threats that they will rape them 11 year old children they've read all those threats yeah and they're from Huddersfield where in the last year what 60 men 60 Muslim men have been taken through the courts for raping 11 year old children those, that's where those girls are from they're terrified all they want is safety all they want is a home oh they want a home for Christmas they want a home they, they haven't got a permanent home they, they, they've not been put in a safe house. I know a lot of people thought they were in a safe house. They've not been given a single thing. They're nowhere. No, nothing from support from any council or government or any, or any group or anything. Now, the Kirklees Council, yeah? and I'm going to top it all off with Huddersfield Town Football Club. Huddersfield Town Football Club, when, we, when we're collecting the letters for the family, we opened up a letter addressed to Bailey from Huddersfield Town Football Club banning him for the rest of his life. Do you know, there's one thing, I spent a bit of time with that kid. Do you know what a lovely young boy he is? Do you know some 15, 16 year old kids, they've got attitude, they've got a little chip on their shoulder, yeah? He is a lovely young lad, a real nice kid. A real nice kid, do you know, is it, even his email address is HTFC, Huddersfield Town FC. Do you know there's one passion and love that kid has after talking with him? And it's in Huddersfield Town Football Club. And then he gets a letter from that football club. And the letter says, the letter says that there's been no conviction for anything, nothing at all for what happened in school playground. But because of what happened in the school playground, Huddersfield Town have made the decision that they wouldn't want those sort of bullying scenes in their football stadium. So they made the decision to ban you for the rest of their life. So Huddersfield Town have made a decision because they're apparently against bullying to bully a 16 year old child over a school playground incident. Now have Huddersfield Town sent letters to all the paedophiles from Huddersfield telling them that they're, they're banned from the football stadium? What about the drug dealers? Are they banned from the football stadium? What about the people who have been in jail for violent attacks? Are they banned from Huddersfield football stadium? No, but a kid is. What, because he grabbed another kid by the throat in a school playground? Do you know, you've, that boy has been driven to try and take his own life. Not by one, not by two, but by the whole of the, whole of the mainstream media. All the people reading the news broadcasts. Huddersfield Town Football Club. Kirklees Council. All of you. Now, when I, I went for the meeting with the mental health team to tell them and record myself telling them, we're going to end up with a dead child here because of what you're doing because of what you're allowing to happen to this family. Now, if, and I've got to say this off my own back, yeah, that house in, Kirk, in Huddersfield is still the council home of that family. If they have not been safely relocated and given a home, okay, very soon, I'll say, I'll give a date, I just need to look at my dates, then, We'll be taking that family back to that home. 
And I'll be asking you, the men out there, to come with me to two shifts to protect that family in their home for as long as it takes. And the chaos that's going to be brought to Huddersfield Town and the football club at some point when I get round to it, the chaos that is going to be brought to that city because all they want is safety. All they want is see reels, and they don't want safety. They've got we took them we took them away to give them safety, yeah, for Christmas. They want a home. They want a home somewhere permanent. Somewhere that the girls when the, the council said, oh, when the mum said today, but the house you're trying to put us in is 2.4 miles away. Everyone there is going to know who we are. We've received all these death threats, and they said, oh well, when something happens at that house, we'll move you again. Are you for real? Two 11 year old kids ain't been to school for two months. You want to put them back in the danger zone. So we do need a massive march. This is the, this is the warning before the massive march. This is the warning before Huddersfield Town Football Club is shut down on a match game. This is the warning before social services of Huddersfield, Kirkley's council, before, this is all the warnings because their mother is asking me to not do any of these things at the moment, yeah? But you put, but they, they need a home. They need a home. If you're angered by this, if you're frustrated by this, contact Kirkley's council. Contact their social services. Ask the question why those children are not in the school. Two months. Do you know he needs to sit as GCSEs, that young kid? Bailey needs to sit as GCSEs to have a life. They haven't done anything. Nothing. And look at what it was all over. Look at what it was all over. Yeah, Phil, McDermott, thank you, mate. I'm sure a lot of men are going to step forward to do a shift outside their house. And if, that, if that's, the, if that's the, where this has to go, then I'll be going to that house with them. Yeah? And I, like, I know many of you will too. And it's going to cause chaos in that city. But we've waited now for two months nearly. The family have been on the phone for nearly two months to try and get home to try and get someone to live, to try and get safety and stability for their children, and education, all the things that they're meant to get, all the things that they're, is their right, all the things they deserve as British citizens. Every other citizen comes to this country and gets it instantly. They've been driven from their home, driven from their family home. They're refugees, and they've been refugees now for two months with nowhere to live and nowhere to stay, nowhere to call home, and no school. Absolutely infuriating, man. I'll, I'll update more on this, yeah? Because I, I've spoke to his mum, their mum, to, um, Bailey's mum today. I spoke with the family again and said, look, I want to organise, I want to start a campaign. And I'm going to start a campaign. But she's talking with them and has been talking with them and like you're banging your head on a brick wall, getting nowhere with them for months. On another point... I'm, I'm sitting at motorway services um, in the north of England because today I've been to Rotherham. <coughs> um, and I've been to Rotherham because... I've not been to Rotherham, I've been to Sheffield. Confused, yeah? Tired. I've been to Sheffield because the BBC, with a grooming victims, the victims of sexual offences, when they're minors, they are protected. Their names and identities are protected forever. Okay, so we've had a grooming scandal. There's been a victim. She's known by a pseudonym. And BBC Asian Network, a Muslim presenter for BBC Asian Network, broke all of the reporting restrictions that are there to protect her and named her on national radio to BBC Asian Network to, to, to the Muslim community give her name as that victim so he exposed who the pseudonym victim was he worked for the BBC the, the court case has been happening today um, do you know what they haven't took him to court the person who's been taken to court is the Edda another Middle Eastern chap so the editor's in court. The man that actually said her name has not been taken to court. And that's because in these sort of proceedings for contempt of court, 
Say, for example, when I was working for Rebel Media and I was arrested for contempt of court, what the law states is that the employer, the person they work for, is who should be prosecuted. So at that instance, Rebel Media, who are paying my wages, is incidentally, the law should have prosecuted them because I was an employee and I broke a law at a court. But they didn't, they decided to prosecute me. But then, in this case, they haven't prosecuted the young Muslim who identified the victim. Do you know, after identifying this victim, their family were targeted, her name was given, death threats galore, the consequences of this breach of a reporting restriction, remember I got 13 months for breaching a so-called reporting restriction, the consequences of breaching this reporting restriction for this family are massive. The psychological problems this has caused for the victim are huge. Forever, her identity has been exposed. That also has a huge effect for other future victims because future victims who are promised an anonymity, promised that no one know who they are, well, they'll look at this and say, hold on, BBC Asia Network named her. We don't have. We can't, we can't rely on that. So will the man, will the editor, we know the man who said it, he ain't actually getting done. But the editor, will the editor who has potentially, no, not potentially, he has endangered the life of the victim and her entire family. It's the BBC. It's not like they must have safeguarding and double check what they're doing. I, I, I struggled to find how this could be a mistake. The same person who gave her name had interviewed her previously and referred to her by her pseudonym. So he knew her pseudonym. He knew her. And then when it comes to him reporting, he gave her name. A real identity. That court case is, <coughs> is currently ongoing. So I'll be updating you and bringing you the, the final results of that. But do any of you think he's going to get a prison sentence? What sort of conversation is, is uh, What are the BBC going to do about this? The BBC. Go, go on the line and Google all the BBC hit jobs they've done on me for my contempt of court charge. And look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. Endangering the life. Ah, oh, man. Again, to, I know I've been quiet recently, yeah? And when I can actually detail everything that's gone on or been going on, I've had a lot going on with, with the police, with my family, um, with endangerment, with... <coughs> Lots of things I can't publicly talk about and, until a certain time. So that's why I've been quiet. I've been trying to sort my own, my own personal problems out. And so, yeah, just as soon as I've still, which I still haven't sorted yet. To be honest, I still haven't sorted. I've still had just two days ago. Just two days ago, the police come to see me again. You, you, ah. Uh, with um, intel I've had constant intel constant movement um, so I'll uh, yeah I can't really that's what I just said because I've been quiet and I just said bear, me, bear with me because when I can detail everything I will and I can't do that just because of safety reasons for my family and do you know what it's really probably one of the worst situations in the whole of the last 10 years because it's, this has had the most adverse effect on my, on my family on my wife and my kids but Kirkley's Council, I don't want to start a massive campaign against you. I don't want to bring thousands of people into your city. I don't want to target or come to Huddersfield Town Football Stadium to make a point. I don't want to. But I more so don't want to watch a young child be persecuted to death for a school playground incident. So please do the right thing. The right thing to do when we have a child and give that family some safety. Get them into an area. They have given you and listed you six or seven different regions where they will be happy and safe. And you've done nothing in two months. Anyway, we're bringing you a nice video in the next 24 hours, 48 hours.
one of the good old day ones.